was a mask, bro. Like I, I didn't, like I said, when I stopped drinking, I became me again. You mm -hmm. know, I took that mask off. So what people saw was me, you know, and even though, and I was fronting like I was happy and, you know, that's the party guy, yo, it's all good. You know, let's go out, let's do all this. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't happy. I was struggling with, you know, depression and being overweight. Like I, mm -hmm. I lost almost 40 pounds within the last year, like legit. Down, down back to size 32 on the waist, you know what I'm saying? Well, congratulations on that. <laughs> thank you, yeah. thank you. But again, that, that's, all, um, that's all of these choices that I'm making now. By taking that mask off, being mm -hmm. able, people are able to see me for myself, for, for oh. who I really am. All right, so good afternoon. So, how you doing? Good, good. How are you? All right. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Jeremy Prasad, uh, a.k.a. Chem King. That's uh, my stage name. I'm a singer, songwriter, actor, student, and uh, lover of life. So if you were writing a book about your life, right, which of these topics would be the story you want everyone to read? And what do you think would be the name of your book? Damn. <laughs> That's deep. So now I look, right? Can I do more than one? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You can, uh, you know what? Actually, maybe, maybe two. Two? Okay, okay. All right, all we, right. We could work with two. All right. So the first one, failure. Second one, career. Failure and career. Yeah. Okay. So before we talk about that, what do you think the name of your book would be if you were to write one about failure and career? Off the top of my head, maybe something like from then till now, you know, because the failure is where everything comes from. For me mm -hmm. you know like i've been through a lot you know i've i've struggled i've had success in certain places and then lost it all you know i've been down in the bottom and i'm at the point in my life right now like i can be here with you guys doing this mm -hmm. so from that failure i've found strength and and uh drive determination to now where i'm focused on that career you know like i said i'm singing like i just dropped the new project coming out you know acting and I'm a student, I'm graduating at the end of the semester. So like all that pain and struggle and failure mm -hmm. has led me to have the strength to build the career. Okay. Yeah. All right. So before we get into the questions that I have here on the paper, okay. right? I got to start off with the obvious. You're a musician. Yes. Right? Singer, yeah. playing instruments? No. Okay. So you're a singer, yeah. right? How'd you get into the music business? Um, I've been singing since I was a child, you know, since as long as I can remember. Um, I have only recently broken into the music business, like saying that I am an artist. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to put this first EP out that I just recorded. I finished recording it about a month ago, almost two months now. And um, I originally said I was going to do this in 2010. So it's been 13 years in the making, you know. So again, back to that failure. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to be a, an actor, a singer, trying to do all this stuff. But growing up and, you know, just going through growing pains, life, struggle, you know, personal demons and outside demons, you know, it's, um, it has brought me to where I'm at now. So technically, I'm brand new. I'm mm -hmm. a new artist. Like, I'm just doing a bunch of shows now, getting the campaign going for my uh, promotion for the album and stuff. But... Like I said, I've been singing for as long as I can remember, and I've been trying to do this for a while. All right, so you've been, you've been trying to do it for a while. So what, what was the final, I guess, deciding factor where you said, you know what, I'm going to go 100% into the singing career? Um, real talk, my sobriety. Okay. I, I stopped drinking. You know, um, that's a huge part of the failure part of my life, you know, like uh, I definitely struggled with that growing up and um, being able to kind of conquer that demon, you know, it's always there, mm -hmm. but 
being able to just kind of move past that hurdle and really be able to like focus. Because without that, you know, people have been saying like, yo, you're changed. Oh my God, you're doing your thing, this and that. But I really feel that I haven't changed. I'm just able to be me. You know, I'm finally able to be myself mm -hmm. without the, all the other bullshit, well, you know, like right. the drinking, whatever, partying, all that stuff. So now that I have this focus, I'm actually able to, to get things done, you know, live up to the potential that I've always had. What would you say are some of your strengths? Some of my strengths, um, that positivity, man. I mm -hmm. feel that's a strength, you know, like, so th those things, I try to make people better when I'm around them, just as, you know, it's about, about synergy. Mm -hmm. So I feel that one of my strengths, definitely those things and my empathy. You know, I feel um, that because I do my best to understand other people and how they feel, um, that I'm able to be in places and, you know, be, just be wherever I need to be because mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm just trying to make sure that everybody's good. So I feel that that's a strength. All right. Yeah. Now, would, would your friends or family say that that's your biggest strength or do you think they would say something different? I mean, now, you know, but... It, again, I go back, yeah, I'm going to keep going back to the failure stuff and we will get into that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people's perception of me is changing now because I'm changing or I'm changing back to what I am, who I am. You know, like I'm not because of where I am with my sobriety and stuff like that. It's there has been a perception of me. Like, I know mm -hmm. I'm not stupid. You know, like I used to, there, there were times where people were like, damn, bro, you need to chill. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's that's still out there. You know, and I'm just uh, excited for people to see who I really am, you know. Some of the values that you mentioned, you know, you mm -hmm. mentioned that you're empathetic and, and um, you, you, hold your, you hold your beliefs that you're able to bring positivity to everybody mm -hmm. around, right? Um, can you say that there are any other values or beliefs that you really stand firm on? Fairness, man. Like, I, I'm, I'm a huge believer in fairness. You know, like, mm -hmm. if, if we're coming to the table to try to do something, we both have to be on the same page. You know, like, if, and if I'm expecting something from you, you're expecting something from me, there, there needs to be a, a communication and a relationship where we both can benefit. You know, and this world is not fair. Like, we know mm -hmm. that for a fact. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we see it all the time, you know. Good people go down and bad people are all the way up. So I, I try to pride myself with trying to be as fair as possible, you know. Um, and if I deal with people who are not fair or try to take advantage, I don't need that around me, you know. Like, I, the energy that you bring around you will ultimately be within you, you know. So if, there, if those type of things are in your circle, you're just going to be, put, put, you're putting yourself in a bad position. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, speaking of that, right, mm -hmm. and, and realizing that things are not fair, mm -hmm. right, um, one of the things that I do want to ask you is, you know, especially now that you're, like I said, full-fledged full in the music business, um, what do you think are some of the things that cause you stress, and how do you deal with stress? And when I say that, I don't want you to touch into, you know, how you used to deal with stress. Right, right, right. But how are you currently dealing with stress? Okay, okay. Um... Well, right now, what, I, what stresses me, I don't know. I, I mean, I try not to get stressed too much. Like schoolwork, I guess, you know, like I'm taking five classes right now, full semester, uh, full mm -hmm. courses, 20 credits. So it's a lot of work, you know, a lot of writing and stuff. Um, so that kind of stresses me out. But what I've done is try to find tools and, and ways to manage the work that I'm doing so it doesn't become overwhelming. But if there is a time when I do get stressed, I try to take a step back and just look at the overall picture and not get too caught up in the moment. Mm -hmm. Even though I feel that being in the moment is so important because that's all we have. You know, like life is but a series of moments. Mm -hmm. But if you get too caught up in one thing, it can just spiral. And then before you know it, you know, you spent five, six hours, maybe even longer, just not doing anything. And you know, time is so precious. You know, people work for money and 
fame and all this stuff, but the only thing that we all have is time. And mm -hmm. it's not infinite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like every, everybody has an expiration date. So wasting time again with the, you know, negativity or any of that stuff, like you, you have to be efficient. You have to make sure that you're doing the best that you can when you can. I mean, easier said than done, obviously, but you know, you got, if you, if you have a goal, if you focus on it a little bit, I think, you know, you, you just try to, it takes you on that path. All right. So speaking of goals, yeah. right. Which is actually is one of the questions I'm going to ask. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you're in a new career path, right? Yeah. So what are some of your goals or aspirations that you have for yourself now? Um, right now, like I'm shooting for the stars, bro. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get the Grammy, I'm trying to get the Oscar, and I'm trying to get the Tony. Like, right. I'm trying to do all three, and I'm trying to get all three, son. So, I'm just going full throttle, you know? There's, there's a specific um, term for that, right? Yeah, you know, it's, what's it's it called got, again? The got or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's when you win all three. Um, mm -hmm. There are definitely some people out there, some legends out there who have done that, and, you know, I aspire to be like that because I can do it. You know, I, I, have the I have the ability, I have the talent, um, and I'm developing, or I, I have the drive. You know, I have the means to do it, so why not? No, right? Yeah. And do you openly communicate these goals with, you know, your, your core circle, like your friends, your family? Very recently, yes, because I've been, you know, making these, I've been thinking about these things, you know, trying to make these goals, trying to make these plans. Um, cause like I said, time, you know, we don't have much of it, so I need to do everything I can now. So I've been telling everybody, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like I'm trying to do it. I got to put it out there, manifestation, whatever you want to call it. Like definitely my, my, my people know what's up. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, sometimes sharing such, you know, large goals with people can sometimes bring some backlash. Have you encountered that with, with anybody? I haven't, I haven't, enc I haven't encountered it with anyone, but my circle is very tight and um, very supportive of me because they know where I've been. They've mm -hmm. seen my struggles. They've seen the worst. They've seen the bottom. So where I'm at now and how I'm elevating myself with them around me, they're just like, we're in there, you know, like everybody's with it. All right. Yeah. Now, along your journey, have you had to, I, I would, I guess, leave anybody that you were close to behind because he didn't align with your current path? Hell yeah, bro. Like, it, 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 that, that's, I think that is a major part of doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you need to, because you don't know when you're in the situation. You know, you don't know the people around you. You don't know what's going on. But as you grow and as you progress in life, you start to see and notice things. Like, when I, start, when I stopped drinking, yo. Know, where is everybody at? You know, where, where's party Jeremy? Oh, Jeremy's not partying? Nah, I'm good. I, I don't need to chill with him. I don't need to see him. Or the calls dry up or, you know, the texts, this and that, back and forth. And that's a great thing, you know, because now it's like, okay, now you're just really exposing the truth that we weren't just friends. We were drinking buddies or whatever. You know, you were, you just needed somebody to be there for you and I needed somebody to be there for me. And it's those negative things that, they just blind you, you know, mm -hmm. like, like I said before, you, you, you don't know that you're in that situation until it's too late. So taking a step back, like I said, with the stress, you have to take a step back and look at everything. And being able, once I did that, I was like, all right, yeah. And it was easy. Most people started to remove themselves, mm -hmm. to be honest. All I'm like, yo, I'm not drinking no more. I'm not drinking or I'm not doing this. And then they stopped hitting me up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was removing them, but they also removed themselves. All right. Yeah. So, and, and I'm assuming some of these people you were really close with. Sure, sure, right. sure, yeah. So, how did, so it was, it was good that they were moving themselves and, mm -hmm. and you were moving them. Yeah. But when you're going through it and realizing that, oh, this person really didn't care that much about me, they only cared about drinking, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How did that really make you feel? It sucked, you know, like that shit, it was like, damn, I thought we were boys, you know, I thought we were like really cared about each other, you know, because mm -hmm. while we're chilling and while we're doing all this stuff, we're sharing a lot, you know, like we're building bonds, you know, where we're really, or oh, so I thought, you know, mm -hmm. doing these things, but then 
once you step back and realize and remove those things, it's, that's not what it was. It was just, you know, call it codependency, call it just, you know, the habit. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it exposed itself to for what it was. Okay. Yeah. So do you feel like going through all of that now makes it harder for you to connect to new people? Oh, no, no, no. I feel uh, quite the opposite, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I've been... I've been doing a lot of networking lately, you know, I've been really trying to just put myself out there with the music and stuff, doing a lot of performances and stuff, and it's like, everywhere I go, I'm just really fluid with you know, meeting people, you know, doing the networking thing. Um, actually, the other day, uh, I, was, I was at the bar with my boy, and that, is, that in itself is big, because I can go to the bar now, I can go chill, and I don't even have the temptation to drink. Mm. So I was there, we were chilling, and this couple sat down next to us, and I just started talking to them, you know, nothing crazy. Ended up talking for like three hours, all of us, you know, just laughing back and forth. And then when they left, my boy was like, yo, bro, you can literally talk to anybody. <laughs> like, you could, I could put you anywhere, and you can talk to anybody about mm -hmm. anything. So um, now that I'm sober, it's like I, I have all those tools at my disposal right away. Like, I'm not starting off the night good and having great conversation and then five six shots later i'm all uh, you know fucked up or thinking i'm smooth when i'm really mm. not you know because that's definitely right. that definitely goes down so um no I, I i think it's been a great um i've been i've been doing it much better i feel all right yeah. all right and so do you feel that now that you're sober that the, the connections that you're making, not only are they more genuine, but are they helping you propel towards the goals that you mentioned before? Oh, yeah, definitely, 100%. Because where I'm putting myself, I'm putting myself in these positions, in these places where I'm networking with the people who, who with the right people. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people that are involved in the world that I want to be in, I'm able to meet them and, you know, make a good impression and just be myself and not have, you know, alcohol making me a different person, you know, because it, it definitely, <clears throat> that, that's what changed me. Mm. You know, the alcohol is what changed me into that. And being so dependent on it and relying on it, just, it was, if, if I was still drinking now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I wouldn't be, because in these, in these places, professional settings, you have to be on point. You know, and and I need to perform. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm going to sing and do all that, I can't be doing that drunk. I mean, I'm sure there, there are artists, you know, who do that. And, you know, I'm not knocking anybody who can make that happen. But for me, I just, I can't. Right. Yeah. Challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm actually going to switch the question around for you because your situation is unique. Right. Yeah. So how do you feel like you're approaching challenges now as to before your sobriety? Right now, I, I try to approach challenges um, step by step. You know, I try to make a plan. In, in, in the schoolwork that I'm doing, I'm studying uh, professional and technical writing at City Tech. And, you know, it, it, it encompasses a lot of things like information architecture and a lot of, uh, you know, technical writing, tech technical documentation and stuff. And a lot of stuff that we learn is have a plan. Mm -hmm. Have a plan do some more prep work up front for whatever you're doing so when your shit is flowing it's actually it's easier in the long run so whatever i'm doing like scheme of things that you lose sight of the step by step you know so even though sometimes you can get caught up on a particular step if you have a plan you can see where what needs to be uh, adjusted, you know, like a dynamic approach to what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because every, every, every problem is different. Every challenge is different, you know, so, and I've learned this very recently, being dynamic is very important. You know, you have to be uh, quick on your feet, witty, problem solver. Um, I used to struggle with change. You know, I used to just, all right, it's one way, boom, 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 we're gonna do this. But I've realized, you know, you gotta, gotta be on the fly sometimes, you know? And have, you, you mentioned, you know, what you're doing now and 
being dynamic, be able to deal with change and everything. And that's, you know, of course, that's <laughs> imperative, especially in your line of work now. You're going to have to deal with a lot of moving parts very Definitely. quickly. Yeah, right? yeah, for sure. So when you used to approach problems, right? How do you think that your former approach, I guess, either led to drinking or was a result of drinking? Do you? Um, I just didn't have a plan, bro. And I was just caught up in, I was young. I didn't know what I was really doing, mm -hmm. but I thought I knew what I was doing. You know, and, and being, because I've been acting for a while. Like I was, I was an actor before I became, I mean, I look, I love singing. I've been singing my whole life, but I was an actor before I was a singer. I went to city, city college back. I wouldn't be mm -hmm. graduated from Brooklyn tech in 2005. I went to city college for theater arts. So like, you know, I've done Shakespeare, sh uh, classically trained. I've done musical theater. So, um, you know, doing that, being in the, in that, um, in that world, it kind of, it, it took its toll on me in the sense where I didn't really know what I was doing, you know. Mm -hmm. I was acting and then partying, you know. We would like, we would do plays and then cast parties, plays and cast parties. And then it got to the point where it was just parties, parties, parties. And I didn't realize what was going on. I thought, you know, I had it made in the shade, man. The agents were coming and I was going to get this role and this and that, like, but I didn't do the work. Mm -hmm. I didn't put in, I didn't follow through, you know. I, I thought... <clears throat> The world was going to be given to me on a platter, you know, and I had to learn the hard way and the long way. Pause. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I just I had to go through it to, to really understand that all the talent in the world doesn't mean shit if you don't have the hard work or dedication or drive, you know, mm -hmm. so that, that's where I'm at now. I had to learn these things the hard way. Because growing up, I didn't, I'm, I'm a lucky man. I, I, I count my blessings every day when I wake up, yo. Like, my, I, have, I, can, I come from a good home. My parents raised me well. You know, I went to great schools. You know, I went to Brooklyn Tech with, um, o, o, with the OG over there. Um, so, but it, it, it was, all right, yeah, okay, I'll study a little bit or whatever. I'll do this. I didn't really have to study hard or work hard to get good grades, things like that. So once I got to a certain point in my life where it was like, okay, those qualities and those things that you were coasting on, you know, without really putting in a lot of work, they don't cut it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, all right, you, it's just, okay, now what? You're a grown ass man, bro, what you doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, cool, you can act, you can sing a little bit, are you kind of smart, what else? You know, so I had to really look inside and really fucking, turn it out to be able to, I had to, so I, I see a therapist weekly and uh, that's definitely a huge thing that has helped me um, in, in my journey and uh, handling my struggles. And, you know, she, um, we talk about, uh, we talk about so many things, um, but just using the tools that I get from her, you know, again, to, to handle mm -hmm. the stress and things like that. It's, um, it's, uh, damn, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> no, it's yeah, all right. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I talked to a therapist and, you know, we just try to work through this, through these things mm -hmm. together, you know? Okay. With, with the acting, because I know sometimes they say actors sometimes struggle with getting out of character and going mm -hmm. back into not, you know, that double life. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. That, um, method acting. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. So do you feel like you know, being a trained actor kind of helped you get through, like, mask your problems with sobriety at all? Mm, damn, that's a good question. Uh, I would have to say, yeah. You know, just being able to kind of put up that front, mm -hmm. you know, um, but also believing it myself. You know, like, I, I'm not a method actor. I'm not really uh, into that, that sort of uh, line of acting, but mm -hmm. um, I, the way that I act, it's, it's like, it's called as if, you know, like, it's as if something. So uh, I believe that something is happening, but it's not a real thing. 
you know, it's like, and I'm not drawing on past emotion, like past trauma, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, cause a lot of method actors, they do that kind of thing. You know, they get into that role and then they're using real things to make it a real experience. So, and it, it's tough to separate that because it becomes real, but I try to, um, you know, uh, whatever the scene is or whatever the, uh, the, whatever we're doing workshop or whatever, uh, you, you read the, you read the script, you read the lines, you see what, it, what it's about, and then you see, okay, how would I feel if something like this happened to me? Not something that did happen to me mm -hmm. that I can change into this, you know? So it's, it's a relatable feeling, a real feeling, but not something that is, that I have to like believe that, that whatever the line is, is a real uh, event, mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense. No, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Wearing a mask, is something that you were kind of just got accustomed to. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that that's true? Absolutely. The, the alcohol was a mask, bro. Like I, I didn't, like I said, when I stopped drinking, I became me again. You mm -hmm. know, I took that mask off. So what people saw was me, you know, and even though, and I was fronting like I was happy and you know, that's the party guy, yo, it's all good. You know, let's go out, let's do all this. But I wasn't. You know, I wasn't happy. I was struggling with, you know, depression and being overweight. Like I, mm -hmm. I lost almost 40 pounds within the last year, like legit down, oh. down back to size 32 on the waist. Well, you know what I'm saying? Well, congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But again, it, that, that's all, um, that's all of these choices that I'm making now by taking that mask off, being mm -hmm. a, people are able to see me for myself, for, oh. for who I really am. Okay. Yeah. And do you feel like it actually was a little difficult to rediscover yourself after putting on a mask for so long? Yeah, I didn't know who I was without, you know, those, those other influences, you know, because I've been doing it for so long, just being so, it was so ingrained in me, I didn't know anything else. Mm -hmm. So once I was able to get out of it, I mean, it was a struggle to kind of adjust, but Again, just working with my therapist and just being positive, being focused and just stay, just having goals. You know, like I have the power. It's me, I, I'm the one who's making these decisions. Mm -hmm. And whatever is outside, I can't really control that. I can control me. I can control what I'm doing. So now that I am where I'm at, not only is it easier for me to be out and do these things, it's, it's um, better than ever. You know, because um, all the all that charismatic and, you know, when I was drinking, I thought that I had to drink to be loose. Oh, let me take a shot. Let me oh, let me loosen up a little bit. No, nah, I, don't, I don't need any of that. Mm -hmm. I don't need any of that. And it, it was a bit of an adjustment to figure that out. But now it's like, let's go. <laughs> right. You know? yeah. So what were so I'm trying to I have, I have two questions. Right. So the first one is. What were some of the things that you did to like rediscover yourself, right? And then, the, and then the second one was, was there anyone along that journey that that, that helped you besides your therapist, or were mm -hmm. you kind of just keeping that to yourself? Um, what was the first part again? So, what were some of the things that you did to like rediscover like who okay. you were before the drinking? Uh, just dive back into my passions. You know, that's why I'm back in my music career because mm -hmm. that's why I'm back in my acting career and I mean school helped too but school helped me build structure helped me rebuild structure and like something that mm -hmm. uh, that I need to build tangible deliverables for what uh, you have deadlines you have this right. you have that right. so from that I was able to rediscover my passion for music and rediscover my passion for acting and these things they're my goals now they're driving me like I'm doing it all the time I'm talking about it all the time like it's it's non-stop and these, these things have helped me rediscover who I am. Mm. Uh, like I'm even working through it, you know, writing my music, you know, write, I have some stuff about all this, you know, like, uh, you know, my drinking and struggles, relationships, everything. Um, and uh, as far as the second part, what was it again? The second part was when, 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 no, it's fine. <laughs> when you were going through, you know, trying to change to being sober, mm -hmm. right? 
And I know you said that you lost a lot of people on the way and it kind of was like a shock to a lot of people. Right. Was that something that you were public about or and were you bringing the people along with you like oh, through right. the hard parts of the journey or were right, you kind of right. just keeping it to yourself? So, no, nah, I mean, you know, my, my family was with me the whole time. Okay. You know, like they know all the struggles, especially my mother. You know, she always, always wanted what's best for me. And as, as tough as it's been, she's always been there. You know, always, always made sure that um, I tried to keep it straight and narrow, even though I wasn't. So, like, my family was definitely a huge part of it. And that's, that again is my support system, my friends and family. You know, everyone, everyone who's still with me now has seen me at my worst. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're still with me. Because they have unconditional love for me. And they truly, truly care about me. Because... So many people have seen me when, when, when shit was high, when shit was money and, you know, everything was mm -hmm. popping. Everybody was around. Everybody wanted to chill. Everybody wanted to be my friend. But as soon as all that shit dried up, everybody went away, except the real ones. Right. And that's why my circle is so close. My shit is so tight. Pause. That's when you were going through a space where you didn't really have, like, a direction or a goal? Yeah. That... Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, throughout those 13 years, right... Did you ever feel like in the back of your mind that you really wanted to go back to music or you kind of just push that to the side? I, I was lying to myself like, yeah, I'm a singer, I'm an actor. I would tell it to myself, but I wasn't doing anything. I was mm -hmm. never doing it. You know, I was just working. You know, oh, I'm going to do this or yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I can sing. I can act, but I'm not a singer. I'm mm -hmm. not an actor. I'm not an artist because you have to do these things to be these things. So, you know, I was just really working just trying to just going through life, you know, not like you said, no real focus, no goals, just mm -hmm. thinking somehow it'll magically happen, you know? Um, and that again is part of a lot of, a lot of that has to do with the drinking, mm -hmm. you know, just that it clouds the judgment, the mind, you know, and I can't, for me anyway, I just couldn't build momentum. I think that's one of the major, major, major things that's been uh, a key to my success now is the momentum of just not being hungover, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I can get up today. Like I've been running every day. I go to sleep like 2 a.m. every day now, 3 a.m. and up at like seven. Working all day, doing schoolwork, doing events, this and that, da, da, da. But I'm able to go to sleep. I'm able to wake up and I'm able to continue on to the next day. You know, like last night, my, my, um, uh, my homegirl, uh, Anya LaBella, she performed uh, in Brooklyn with uh, at a S Street Media, one of S Street Media's events, and uh, I was able to go. You know, we were able to do the thing, stay out late, took her home, went home. Got, I didn't go to bed till like 3 a.m. Woke up this morning at 7, got some work done, got ready, boom, I'm here. Shit, you think I'd be able to do that if I was drinking? I mean, <laughs> if I was still drunk and coming from there to here, maybe, but definitely not. Definitely not, bro. And and that's everything, like with schoolwork, with. The acting, like I got my headshots done over the weekend, uh, um, this past Thursday. If I was hungover, you know, puffy face and all that shit, just bad skin. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can't be taking headshots like that. Right. <laughs> so definitely the momentum has been huge for me. Okay. Yeah. No, right. Your, your parents, because they, like I said, because they built a certain type of life for you. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like things that you were doing were letting them down? Oh, yeah. 100% for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm laughing about it, but it's, it's, it's a disgrace, you know? Like, uh, I, they, they've sacrificed so much for me, you know? Like, they're immigrants coming from Guyana. I'm first generation born American here. Mm -hmm. They come, sacrifice everything to make sure, you know, that we're good. You know, they set up a, they set up a good life for us. And I, I think about this a lot, but I took advantage of the people that mattered to me the most, the people that cared about me the most, you know, and that's something that, you know, I have to live with, mm -hmm. you know, like that. The, my mom always says this shit. There are actions to your consequences. There are actions to your consequences. No. I know. Oh my God. Consequences there are to consequences your to your actions. You yeah. can edit that out, right? You cut that shit. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, there are consequences to your actions. And, you know, uh, I, I, I used to hate when she said that shit. I used mm -hmm. to hate it, but it's true. And, you know, I, these are some of the words to live, that I live by now. You know, I saw there was one of the questions about, like, philosophies or ideologies that mm -hmm. you live by. 
consequences to your actions and um, this too shall pass. That's one that I'm huge on because whether it's good or bad, it's going to pass. You know, like if people are in a bad spot, yo, don't worry, it's going to get better. If, this is, if you're in a good spot, it might not last. It probably won't last. So you need to know that this too shall pass. So that's, that's one of the things that I use for stress too. So mm-hmm. to, to kind of bring that back. If something's fucked up, all right, fuck it. it, it it'll pass. You know, like I have to deal with it now, but eventually at some point 